This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. Hello and welcome to Six Figure Dog Business on PetLifeRadio.com. I'm your host, Ty Brown of TyTheDogTrainerCoach.com. And this is the show where we help you start or grow your pet-related, dog-related business to a healthy six-figure per year or more income. And today, I'm going to be doing a little bit different type of shows. I'm going to be talking about something I haven't talked about before. I'm going to be talking about how to really grow your team and how to how to work with employees as you start growing your team i know i mostly talk about sales marketing stuff like that but i wanted to take a little bit of a deviation today and talk about team building and growth and and how you can actually have a team that makes your life better rather than making your life harder so stay with me i'll be right back molly here's your dinner Zeus, that's not your food. Don't let that happen to your precious cat. Elevate your cat's eating experience with the Cat Tree Tray. The Cat Tree Tray keeps your cat's food off the floor and conveniently located on the cat tree. It's the perfect way to eat. It's a beautiful wrought iron tray that easily attaches to your cat tree and keeps dogs and other critters out of your cat's dish. A must for multi-pet households. There's a 6-inch tray for large bowls and a 4-inch tray for smaller bowls. Purchase your Cat Tree Tray today. Go right now to CatTreeTray.com. That's CatTreeTray.com. C-A-T-T-R-E-E-T-R-A-Y.com. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. All right, so we're back, and I'm talking about team building today. And team building might not even be the right <laughs> the right term. I've been trying to think, like, what, what do we call this? What do we do? Maybe team training, but I got to realize I talk so much about sales and marketing. And in fact, in the consulting that I do with other dog businesses, we talk about sales and marketing. And inevitably, the next problem that comes up is the problems associated with growth, Now, these are problems that a lot of people love. They love the fact that, okay, oh my gosh, I'm growing. We're making more money. Now we've got to hire people. They love it. But it's also oftentimes the stuff that people hate. The challenges that come because of hiring, because of firing, because of building a team, those types of challenges can really take things out of you. You know, I've burned out because of my team before. And really, I shouldn't say because of my team. It was really me. It was because of the structure that I was creating. And so I've burned out in the past because of this. I've had two big burnouts in my career. And what I've found now is now we've got a team between the amount of trainers we have, the amount of interns we have, the amount of admin and support and sales and all that stuff. We've now got a company with over 30 people in it, a team that's over 30 people. And I'll be honest, there's times that like, oh my gosh, my life is a a bit of a nightmare because somebody goes off the rails. You know, somebody does something really bad, really wrong. And, you know, that's happened a couple times. And then there's other times where I'm just kind of dealing with the minutia of, of problems that a team creates. But I can tell you now that my my team of over 30 people, the team that I belong to of over 30 people, is less problematic and less of a headache than back when I had three or four people on my team. And it's because of learning to structure, you know, how we structure things within a team, learning to structure how we get tasks done, learning to build out systems, things like that. And so I say all this to say that so many dog trainers, groomers, pet sitters, walkers have either grown a team in the past and it didn't work out great and they hated it, or they've heard horror stories and so they refuse to grow a team because they don't want to have those horror stories. And frankly, I understand both because I've been there and I've been at the place where a team has caused me more pain than I felt that it was worth. So I've been there, but I've also been at the part where a team has allowed me more freedom, more money. And not only that, it's not just about me, 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 
but we're able to provide employment opportunities and things for others that are far better than what the competition, and I'm not saying just the other dog trainer competition, but you know, we offer an entry level position that's far better than what they're going to get at fast food or far better than what they're going to get at a telemarketing place. And so not just competing with our dog trainers, we offer a real career. You know, a lot of our dog trainers are making six figures. Most of them are the ones that are working full time. Not everyone works full time, but you know, we've got a lot of trainers making six figures and the ones that aren't are on their way to making six figures as they grow and as they get better at the skill and as that part of the company grows. And so we're able to provide opportunities for people. So like I say, my life is markedly better as I've learned to build teams, as we've learned to build teams is a better way of saying it. Because frankly, my wife and our our office team (laughs) has done far more to figure this stuff out than I ever have. But my life is markedly better because of it. And the lives of other people are better. And frankly, that's what a business should be, in my opinion, is a business should be service. The business serves the owner. The business serves the employees. The business serves the customers. The business should merely be a conduit wherein service happens. Customers get things that they want and they're happy about. Owners get equity and lifestyle and uh, compensation. And team members get compensation, opportunities, and fulfillment. That's what I believe a business should be. Now, if you never decide to grow a team, that's fine. But if you're one of these folks that's either grown a team or you're in the process of growing a team or you think you might want to here soon, what I'm hoping is to share a formula with you that's not my formula, frankly, but it's a formula that I think can help you as you're growing a team, as you're building out you know, who your team should be, what your team should be doing. That's a lot of preamble, isn't it? <laughs> But hopefully, hopefully you're with me and you understand what I'm what I'm talking about, because it's tough in this industry, in the pet industry, in the dog industry. It's tough because there's not a lot of larger companies. And so if you go into I don't know, if you go into other service industries like HVAC or plumbing or roofing or you're still going to find it's hard, but you're also going to find that there's probably entire companies built, you know, teaching HVAC, how to grow a team and leadership for HVAC and how to structure payroll and, you know, all that stuff that goes along with team building doesn't exist in dog training. Like I said, I do coaching for dog trainers. There's other folks that do coaching for dog trainers. And this is something that we do talk about. And so there's some resources in this industry, but our industry is not as developed as some other industries. It's a little bit more immature. And as a result, like there aren't like these wonderful best practices that we can look at and say, all right, in the dog training industry, in the grooming industry, here's best practices. And so it really just ends up that those of us that are in the industry are making this up as we go and trying to borrow from other industries and trying to find out what works. And so what I want to share with you today is something that actually my dad shared with me, oh, 20 years ago, maybe more. It's called the Symphony. Actually, I don't even know what it's called. We call it the Symphony System. It's probably got a different name. I think maybe there's a company called Symphony, or maybe this is just the name of the program. And so obviously, I'm not going to do it 100% justice, but, but my dad, for most of my life, has been in sales and leadership training. So, you know, he's training small companies, large companies, Fortune 500 companies. He's he's even helped me in my consultancy. He's helped train a lot of dog trainers on sales, leadership, um, and things like that. And so basically the symphony system is a lens that we can look through in order to determine what's going wrong with our team. So like I say, this is presupposing that we're building a team and things aren't working as well as they should. And that's where a lot of people find themselves, right? They've got a team member not doing this. They've got a team member not doing that. And frankly, what tends to happen in almost all, what I tend to see in the, you know, the dog training groups that I frequent, the dog training groups that I'm in, what I tend to see is people blame the team, right? Oh, I can't get employees to work. Everyone shows up late. You know, they're not putting in the effort. They're not using the software like they're supposed to. They're not this, they're not that. And it's, there's like this presupposition that employees just come to you knowing how to do the job perfectly. And I find that most people aren't training and they aren't doing any sort of like ongoing training with their team. But let's put that aside and let's start from the supposition. Am I using that word right? Hopefully I am. Let's presuppose that you've got a team where it's one person or 10 or 20 or 30 and something's not going as well as it should. How do we go about fixing this within an organization? How do we create organizational change? And what I'm going to do is share with you the six parts here of the symphony system, 
I think it's called the symphony system. But anyways, this is something that I've used for a long time that my dad taught me long ago. This was the type of stuff that he would go into Fortune 500 companies and that they would pay, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars to train their people on. This is stuff that my dad trained me on a while ago. So let me just go through it. Number one, expectations. We have to look and see what are the expectations that have been given. <laughs> I'm kind of chuckling as I say this because I'm thinking back to when... <laughs> I'm thinking back to jobs that I used. To, I've been self-employed now for almost 20 years, but uh, I'm thinking back to when I had jobs. And I remember at this particular, this particular employer, a dog training job that I had before I had my own company. What would happen is generally speaking, the employer, he would work from home and he would show up at the kennel maybe once or twice a week. I would get chewed out for about an hour and then he'd leave. And most of the time, and you might say, oh, well, you're an employee. You know, it was your, I don't know. But I swear to you, most of the time, I had no idea what I was supposed to be doing. So like, it would be frequent that he would come in and he would be like, why haven't you trained this? Why haven't you trained this? And I kid you not, there were several times I would be like, I've never even heard of that. Like, you want me to train what? You want me to train the dog to do what? This was a protection dog company, right? You know, where we were training really high-end protection dog things. And he would like, why haven't you trained the dog to do this? And I would be like, I don't even know what that is. This is the first I'm hearing about it. And he would yell at me because I hadn't trained the dog. Well, you should have figured out that you're supposed to ask me about it. I What you, What I'm getting at here is I'm chuckling because I don't think he thought he was doing anything wrong. And, and frankly, he was a good guy. But there was no expectations. There was no expectations set. He believed that he had set them. But there was no real expectations set. And I often find, and I'm going to point to myself here. I often find that when we're running into issues with team members... And it's like, man, they're not using the software the way that they should. Or, man, they're not saying this to clients the way that they should. I'll often go back and I'll look and say, well, when did we train them on what we expect? And almost always it was never done. It was just something that was kind of like, all right, we got this software, guys, and we want you to kind of use it and do it this way. Or, But there was never any training on it. There was never any expectations set. There was never any sort of accountability built in. It was just kind of like something was added to the business and no expectations were set around it. And I tell you, because I know this happens all the time because it's happened with us all the time. And I think we're probably pretty similar to a lot of people, you know, who, who are <laughs> trying to be good business owners and making mistakes along the way that before you start getting upset at this employee or this team member, what expectations were set? So that's the number one. Number two is to get and give feedback. So when we've got a problem that we're trying to solve, number one, were the expectations there? And number two are we going to get and give feedback? And again, I go back to the experience that I had. And the experience I had was there was no feedback. It was you're screwing up Ty and yelling at me for a good hour and then and then leave. So there's no real feedback on like, hey, the system is broken here, Mr. Boss, because I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. I don't know when I'm supposed to be doing things. I don't know what timeline these dogs are supposed to be trained on. I don't know, you know, I don't know a lot of the things that I know are going to be important to the client once the dog goes home to the client. But I don't know what these things are. And there was never a forum given for me to give feedback. To get feedback, to give feedback, there was no regular meetings. There was no any of that. It was just, you know, come in at random times and I would, my skin would crawl. And frankly, I liked the guy. And so, you know, on a personal level, I liked him. But when he would show up at work, I would be like, oh no, I don't know what it is, but I know I'm about to get in trouble. And frankly, I was a kid in my early 20s and I didn't know how to stand up for myself very well. And so I didn't, just kind of took it, just kind of took it and just internalized it and tried to do the best that I could because I wanted to do a good job. But that's, like I say, the next question is when we're looking to examine a problem, have we created the expectations that we need and are we getting and giving feedback on a regular basis on those expectations? Like I say, guys, I've got four more of these things, but frankly, those two right there, those two right there are, are where most companies, most organizations, I say organization because maybe this is, maybe you're in a church group. You can use this exact same formula within a church group. Maybe you're, uh, maybe you're in a, a working dog club or an agility club or something. I guarantee you these principles are evergreen. They work everywhere. But especially if you're growing a team, were expectations given properly and is feedback on a regular basis being given and received. Those two right there are huge. And if all you ever did was solve just those two, your business would run a lot smoother. But I've got four more. I'm gonna take a quick break right now. We're gonna hear a message from a sponsor. And when we come back, I'm gonna get into the other four. Take a bite out of your competition. 
Advertise your business with an ad in Pet Life Radio podcasts and radio shows. There's no other pet related media that is as large and reaches more pet parents and pet lovers than Pet Life Radio. With over 7 million monthly listeners, Pet Life Radio podcasts are available on all major podcast platforms. And our live radio stream goes out to over 250 million subscribers on iHeartRadio, TuneIn, Stitcher, and other streaming apps. For more information on how you can advertise on the number one pet podcast and radio network, visit PetLifeRadio.com slash advertise today. Let's Talk Pets. Let's Talk Pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. <laughs> All right, so we're back. We're talking about the symphony system, and basically what this is, this is a system that as we are building our team and we're finding challenges, what lens do we look through to solve those challenges? You know, as there's communication going on with our team and there's interpersonal stuff going on, how do we look through the correct lens so that we can solve problems, improve our processes, and get better and better and better? The system I learned long ago is called the symphony system. Number one is have clear expectations. Number two, get and give feedback on a regular basis. Number three is does the individual in question have the right tools to do the job? Have they been given the right tools? Now, tools could be a lot of things. You know, tools could be the training tools that you use when you're a dog trainer. If you're a dog groomer, do they have the right air blowers? Do they have the right shampoos? Are they in the right order? Do they have to walk to the other room to get the supplies that they need when they should just be build a little shelf right here to put the supplies on? You know, does the dog walker that I employ, does he have the right app on his phone? You know, does he need a phone? Does he need a tablet to do the work that he's doing? Does this trainer, does she need this notebook to, you know, do we need kennel cards for that? Whatever it is, do we have the right tools? And oftentimes this is just a very simple one to overlook that we just don't. And you have to invest in the right tools to get the job done. And so that's number three is do we have the right tools? And number four is do we have the right training? So there's a difference between getting and giving feedback and training. And this is something that like, I'm almost embarrassed to admit this because I want to say, when is the first time... Do, 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 do. We brought on our first team member, I would say probably 10 years ago. So up until 10 years ago, I was a one person show, right? And I think that sounds right. Yeah, I think it was about 10 years ago we brought on our first person. It was an admin. She was an office worker. And it was shortly after that that we brought on another trainer. And then, you know, now we're up to whatever it is, 30 something people on our team. And so, so I want to say I have had 10 years out of my life and I'm 40. <laughs> so 25% of my life has been spent managing a team. And (laughs) like I say, a little bit embarrassed to admit this, but about only one and a half years of that have we had training programs for them. Now, all along the way, people got trained. I mean, they had to. We've been growing a business. It's not like no one knew how to do their job. But we never once, I shouldn't say we at this point, I should bring us all back to me. I never once said, okay, here's the job of an admin, clear expectations, Here's the tools that an admin needs, an office manager, whatever. And I'm going to give them ongoing training to teach them how to do it. Never once. And along the way, I'm kind of chuckling right now, but there's part of me that along the way has lost some very good people because this process wasn't being done. They weren't getting training. There was no, they didn't always have the right tools. They weren't getting and giving feedback. The expectations weren't there. And as a result, maybe they got lazy and didn't do their job, but I didn't provide them an environment where it was conducive to doing their job. And so I can think back and we've lost some people over the years that I'm like, oh, thank goodness they were, that was a bad idea to bring them on in the first place. But I would say the majority of people we've lost over the years to either having to fire them. And I've, I think I've only fired a couple few people anyways, either having to fire them or them quitting because they're unsatisfied over something. I look back and realize those were really good people that I think I failed that I didn't set them up and I didn't give them the training that they needed and just teach them how to do the job in a structured fashion. So like I say, things happened. People got trained along the way, but it was along the way. You know, it was by shadowing here and there and it was by, hey, Ty, how do I do this? Oh, you do it this way. Okay, cool. Or it was, uh, you know, oh, I got to remind them to do this. So I send them an email, but there was no structured, like here's how your job goes and here's how I'd like you to do it. And here's the accountability that we're going to have and blah, 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 blah. 
It just didn't happen. And about a year and a half ago, we started putting in training processes for everything. For our trainers, you know, here's the process we're going to take you through from not knowing how to be a trainer to being a, a really effective and good trainer to admin people to salespeople. And they're still not even perfect training programs, but at least finally we've got something and we've got something to put people through. For years and years and years, it was like training was like on the fly. There was never any structured training. And I know I'm not alone here because like I say, my dad, who's been in sales training forever. And in fact, yesterday we were talking about this. He's got this company he's working with, with like a 50 person sales force and they've never had sales training once a 50 person sales force. So this is a multi, 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 multi million dollar company that's never had sales training. So I hear stuff like that and I feel a little bit better because I know I'm, I realize I'm not the only one that's <laughs> so stupid that he didn't put training in. But at the same time, it hurts. Because like, in fact, as I'm saying this, like there's four or five faces passing in front of my mind's eye being like, I failed that person. I failed that person. I failed that person. These are people that should still be in our company that we either fired or through our lack of doing stuff right, they had to leave because it wasn't the right opportunity for them anymore. Anyways, that hurts. And so recognizing that it was my neglect, because it's not just the fact that they're no longer in the company and, and benefiting us, but you know, along the way, those relationships don't always end well. And that hurts. That hurts that there's good people that I didn't provide them what they needed. And as a result, I caused pain. So for that level alone, build out your systems, you know, build out your training and stuff like that. So those are the first four, you know, when we're trying to determine, like, how do we solve this problem within our company? Have expectations been set? Are we getting and giving feedback? Do they have the right tools? Do they have the right training? And number five is, do we have the right person? And this one is where sometimes, ooh, this hurts. Because you can say, all right, this person has been given the right expectations. We're getting and giving feedback about the job. We provided them the right tools. We provided them the training on how to use the tools and how to operate using the feedback. And still the job isn't getting done right. And still there's too many errors and still, 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 whatever it is, right? And this is where you have to look and say, is this even the right person? Is this person better suited not being within the company? Is this person better suited at a different job within the company? Is this person, is it just not going to work out with this person because this is just the wrong person for the job? And this is where it gets tough, right? But number six is where you've gone through all of this and you've determined it is the right person. And yet, because they have all the skill sets, everything's there. And yet the job's still not getting done. So how can this be? Well, number six, the sixth thing you need to look at in the symphony process, program, whatever the heck it's called, is are they motivated? And motivation, motivation is more of an internal thing. It's not like you can go up to somebody and motivate them. You can hype them up. You can be like, oh my gosh, you're doing great. You're doing awesome. And I love you and keep up the good work. Like you can hype them up, but for someone to maintain excellence, maintain a standard, maintain solid work, whatever we're going to call it, they have to be motivated internally. They have to be motivated. And so now where this one is entirely on them to be motivated, it is on us to look and see what within the environment could allow them to be motivated better. And sometimes it is exactly what you might be thinking. Hey, uh, is there a way to do a bonus structure? Is there a way to make more money? Is there, sometimes it's all just the, um, you know, the financial, like they need to make more money. They need more opportunities. They need more benefits. They need more whatever. Right. And so sometimes we can look and say, well, everything's perfect up until are they motivated? And frankly, I don't think I've set up an environment where they can be as motivated as they can be because they need extra money or they need a bonus system. But sometimes it's, again, sometimes, and maybe, you know, you do that thing with the money and they're still not doing it. That's then it's probably the wrong person, right? It's not the right person for the job. But yeah, motivation isn't always just based around money or things like that. Like, are there things I can do within the environment here at this company that we're building that can give them more fulfillment? you know, is it a title? Is it something as simple as like, Hey, you're, you're, you're going to be the manager of this. Or is it something like a responsibility? Hey, I want you to be in charge of this part of the business. And I'm going to give you the right training and the right tools to be able to do it. But this is your baby. And I really want, you know, I want you to take off and run with this. Or is it just simply recognition? You know, you taking time to recognize, Hey, you're doing a great job and I appreciate it. And thank you. I mean, it could be a whole variety of things. Ultimately, the motivation is only going to happen from within, but it pays to look and see if there is something that you can do as the business owner to create an environment where it is easier for someone to feel motivated. 
well, especially if you're doing the first four wrong. If they don't have expectations, there's no feedback being given or received. There's not the right tools. There's not the right training. Forget about motivation. No one's going to be motivated. Like that's a joke. But if you're doing those four things right, and then you feel like you have the right person, and you've set the environment in such a way that motivation is something that is attainable for the average person, then that's what you do. And that's the environment that you create as the business owner. And that's your responsibility to do all of these things. Again, I often see people hiring with the notion that I need help. So I'm going to hire somebody. They will help me. And at its core, that is what hiring is. But none of that is possible until you have done an enormous amount of legwork at the root saying, okay, I have to set up the right expectations. I have to get, you know, we have to set up systems for feedback. We have to get the right tools and we have to do the right training. And then... I can expect somebody to help me. And then I can expect people to take things off of my plate. It's not somebody shows up day one and is taking stuff off of your plate and you have no systems in place and things like that. That's what I thought. I think that's what a lot of dog trainers, dog groomers, dog pet sitters, dog walkers think when they start building their team is like, I am underwater. I'm in the weeds. I'm every other cliche you can think of for being super busy and overwhelmed. I am all of these things. So if I hire somebody, they will take things off of my plate. And if you're lucky, you might get somebody in the beginning that's good and and figures out how to take stuff off your plate. But you also might just get a regular person who is happy to do a wonderful job, but they didn't get expectations, they didn't get and give feedback, they didn't get the tools, and they didn't get the training. So they could have been phenomenal, but they didn't get the things that would help them be phenomenal. And the business owner is like, well, they should figure out how to do all that. Well, good luck running a business like that. Good luck creating a business where you're expecting your employees to be the ones to figure out how to make your vision come into fruition. Good luck. It's not going to happen. So like I say, there's an enormous amount of work required such that employees can take things off your plate. But when it happens, when that synergy occurs and people are getting what they want, the employee is getting the paycheck that they want. They're getting the fulfillment that they want. They're getting the things that they want. And you're getting what you want what you want out of it in that your income is increasing, your freedom from having to do everything is increasing. Guess what? Your clients get a lot more happy as well. And it just feeds into itself. And this is one of the ways that I've seen how growth has occurred for us is I have gotten a lot better at sales and marketing over the years, but my sales and marketing hits the ceiling very quickly if we do not have the people in place that do a a phenomenal job. And when we've got things clicking on all cylinders, I, sh- I say all cylinders, but we're never on all cylinders. We've always got stuff we're trying to solve. But when we've got things clicking really well, the business just grows and grows and grows. Yeah. Like I've been shocked. Like 2021, we will likely do a million dollars extra in business versus what we did over 2020 or maybe 800, 900,000. But we're going to do so much more. I never thought we could have grown that much. It took me, I don't even remember, 11, 12 years to even get to a million dollars a year. And now we're probably going to add that much in one year. It took me forever just to get to a point where that was what we was the whole amount that we did in a year. And I think a big reason is that we've created these systems. I am mostly patting my office and my wife on the back because they're the ones that have figured out how to do this. And I'm, I'm the guy that sometimes has smart ideas about how it should be done. And they're, they're far better at actually getting it done. But in any case, I want to close just kind of uh, summarizing what we talked about. Building a team can be a nightmare or it can be a godsend. It can be both or it can be in between. That wasn't helpful, was it? (laughs) Building a team can be anything. But like I say, on extreme ends, it can be a nightmare. And on the other extreme end, it can be just absolutely wonderful. And the way to make it more wonderful is to set up your systems such that team members have expectations that are clear, that you, along with the team, get and give feedback that the right tools are provided to the team to do the job that they need, the right training is provided to the team to make sure they know how to do it, the right people are in the right places, and people find themselves motivated as a result of all of this. If you can do that, your business can continue to grow and grow and grow because you've created a foundation on top of which now getting customers becomes so much more easy, um, so much easier because you've got the systems in place to make those people happy and you've got happy people helping them be happy. So, so anyways, thank you for listening to the show. I know I went a little bit different that it didn't start out as marketing and sales, but towards the end, I was like, you know what? This is marketing and sales. This is one of the main things that you can do to increase your revenue and increase your sales is to have a functioning machine of a team that just kills it for your clients 
and kills it for you and kills it for each other. If you can have that, you know, that's one of the best things you can have for marketing to actually do its job and for sales to actually do its job. So thanks for listening. I do encourage you to head over to Pet Life Radio, click on my show, of course, Six Figure Dog Business, and listen to all the episodes. There's a bunch of them. And when you're done with that, listen to all the other episodes because there's a ton of cool stuff on PetLifeRadio.com. And if you'd like to talk to me and figure out what we do and you know how we help dog trainers to grow their business, head over to TieTheDogTrainerCoach.com. Thanks for listening. We'll talk to you soon. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.